Can one small town transform the nation's economy by creating a secure, affordable energy supply? Santa Fe, New Mexico believes it can. At first glance, this slow-paced town of 68,000 in the foothills of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains seems an unlikely place for the future of economics and energy to take shape. Visitors are more likely to be struck by its history, a colorful amalgam of Native America, Old Spain, and the Wild West that has long made Santa Fe a magnet for adventurers, artists, and assorted dreamers. But here amid the centuries-old adobe architecture and distinctly old-world ambiance, a 21st century plan is being realized, one that could have a profound effect on our country's economy, our environment, and even our geopolitical dealings with the rest of the world. The plan originated when Mark Sardella, a local environmentalist and professional engineer, became alarmed at the information coming his way via reports, professional journals, and academic papers. The news was sobering and impossible to ignore. Our planet's available supply of fossil fuels, oil and gas, was near its peak, or possibly had already peaked, while the world demand was increasing dramatically. If you look at the historical data over 30 years of gas production from the Texas Gulf, you find that in the 1970s, first of all, each well that you actually hit natural gas in was much more productive. Maybe six billion cubic feet of gas would come out of a single well. Whereas over 30 years, the total amount of gas you would get out of any particular well was declining exponentially so that by the late 1990s, any single well might produce less than a billion cubic feet of gas. Sardella didn't need to look far to discover the damage these conditions can inflict. In the past nine years, the price of natural gas, Santa Fe's once economical fuel of choice for heating and cooking, had quintupled. And from August to October 2005, the price per therm rose a whopping 74 percent, with utility companies warning of still greater increases to come as temperatures dropped and demand rose. New Mexico is a poor state whose low-wage economy already forces its residents to spend significantly more of their disposable income on energy than the national average. So the hardships caused by rising prices are greater here than elsewhere. With an economy largely based on tourism, Santa Fe's businesses, particularly hotels, restaurants, and annual markets, also suffer disproportionately from rising fuel costs. And although New Mexico is a gas and oil producing state, the residents get no price break because the fuel is pumped, processed, and delivered primarily by entities based out of state. After pondering the problems resulting from low wages, a fragile economy, and escalating fuel costs, Sardella became convinced that economic stability and growth were only possible when an affordable, reliable energy source was available. In 2003, he founded Local Energy, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping communities become energy self-reliant. I'd literally been studying the natural gas resource degradation problem for weeks. And then one day I'm sitting at my desk, you know, studying the details of, of natural gas decline. And there's this enormous plume of smoke coming out of the, uh, of the watershed where they're doing a controlled burn, much like this fire that's going on behind me. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, here we are entering into a natural gas crisis and we're, we're literally taking the replacement fuel and, and sending it up in smoke. Together with a core group of like-minded professionals, Sardella created a proposal to study the feasibility of building a heating system for the city of Santa Fe that could burn local forest waste products cheaply and cleanly. In 2003, the proposal was awarded a $1.3 million federal grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Forest Service, and the project to create the Santa Fe Biomass Fire District Energy System was born. With the biomass fire district energy system, we would generate all the heat needed for all the buildings in downtown at a central location by burning biomass. And then we would take that heat and distribute it via a network of underground pipes to all the buildings in Santa Fe. In that way, we bypass all of the existing heating systems. And instead, what we do is utilize just the distribution system that's in the building that takes the heat from the boiler room uh, currently to the rest of the building. 
The proposed system addressed three distinct issues. The first was the need to find an alternative to high-priced natural gas to ease the economic burden on Santa Fe businesses and residents. For this, Local Energy took a look at the overgrown forests in and around Santa Fe, as well as the thousands of acres of piñon trees that had succumbed to drought. Particularly in the southwest, uh, the catastrophic wildfire conditions that we've had for so many years has created tremendous attention around this, this issue of forest thinning. And I think forest thinning itself has some mixed feelings around it because, you know, should we or shouldn't we be in the forest thinning? But most ecologists agree that the biggest danger facing our forests in the southwest is the threat of catastrophic wildfire. And most of that is due to overloading of fuel within the forests. We've done fire suppression in these forests for so long now that they're, uh, they're tremendously uh, overgrown with fuel, particularly small diameter fuel. And the problem that the Forest Service and the U.S. Department of Agriculture has been having is that there's not a tremendous economic outlet for this small diameter slash that needs to come out of the forest. So this is sort of the other half of the problem we're looking at. How do we create some kind of economic value out of uh, the small diameter uh, timber and slash. Right now there's a lot of waste biomass around. It's uh, sitting at the landfill. In fact, thousands of tons of biomass go into our municipal landfill every year at some cost, not only to the landfill to handle the, the, the material coming in, but uh, also the consumers that have to pay a tipping fee to actually dump the fuel into the landfill. The second issue to be examined was the need to retain local ownership of the system in order to keep the energy dollars circulating within the community. If we want to create an economy based on renewable energy resources, we were probably going to have to change certain things about that economy itself. Energy resources are not economically interchangeable. You cannot stick with your existing economy and attempt to substitute in a different resource for oil and gas. Again, oil and gas have some very, very special properties. Uh, they're known as high quality resources. Uh, that is, they're extremely convenient. Uh, they can be transported long distances. They're very dense as liquid and gaseous fuels. They're very, very useful in the economy. When you start talking about a solid fuel like biomass, it's a very different thing to truck it around. You, you're not going to get a national biomass economy by harvesting trees in the Pacific Northwest and taking them to the Southeast. Uh, it's going to be a more regional, localized economy. To complete the economic analysis, Local Energy commissioned Michael Schumann, an economist and attorney specializing in localization issues, to study the costs and benefits of such a system. His research and that of others clearly show the benefits of promoting locally owned businesses. Uh, there was a study done last summer in Austin, Texas, looking at the relative impacts of $100 spent at a Borders bookstore versus two local bookstores. $100 spent at a Borders left $13 circulating in the local economy. $100 spent at the two local bookstores led to $43 being respent in the local economy. Basically, you got three times as much economic activity, three times as much tax revenue, three times as many jobs from the dollars spent at the local bookstore. And that underscores why local ownership is so important for sustainable community development. At one level, it shouldn't make a difference whether you earn a dollar for your economy by exporting something and you get a dollar back for it, or if instead of importing something, you make it locally and save a dollar that leaves your economy. It's a dollar either way. And many economic studies have said that their impact on the economy is identical. But in fact, a big chunk of the economic development literature says that import substitution is more important, a better way of stimulating your economy than the export-led development. Every time you import something from outside your economy, you're making it extremely vulnerable to events that are totally outside your control. Import a lot of oil, oops, suddenly a weird foreign policy set of decisions, and dependency on OPEC. We think that OPEC may or may not raise the price of oil by, you know, three, four, five dollars a barrel in the next six months. Our economy is totally hostage to OPEC as a result of that import. 
So it shows that the more that you can be self-reliant, the less you are risking things that are totally outside your control. The second advantage of import substitution is if you have many different kinds of businesses in your economy, you are building the skill set of your economy. And the more skills you have, the more opportunities for economic development that you can take advantage of. The third issue to be dealt with was the effect on the environment of the new heating system. It is well known that the burning of fossil fuels creates air pollution. It also releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which the vast majority of scientists worldwide agree is the primary cause of global warming. Rather than unearthing long buried fuels and thereby introducing new sources of carbon dioxide into the air, the proposed system would burn biomass, which is already part of the carbon cycle, thus limiting the adverse effects. But even the simple act of burning wood creates potentially harmful emissions, so additional science needed to be applied. Local Energy's investigation into the state of the art of biomass research led to Graz, Austria, where a single company, BIOS Bioenergy Systems, had perfected the world's most efficient boiler system, which could be adapted to accommodate a wide variety of biofuels. BIOS has been involved in the establishment of more than 100 biomass based systems throughout Europe. Professor Ingwald Obernberger, an engineer and the founder of BIOS, was contracted to share his expertise with Local Energy to design a clean burning system compatible with Santa Fe's needs. We can state that biomass uh, is the only fuel if we compare it with all the other fossil fuels like oil, gas or coal uh, that can really keep uh, carbon dioxide emissions uh, uh, lower. They can reduce carbon dioxide emissions because the carbon cycle during the process of growth of wood and combustion of wood can be uh, kept closed uh, uh, if a sustainable harvesting is achieved. The emissions can be minimized uh, and they are minimized by modern uh, state-of-the-art technology. Uh, on the one side, uh, because uh, such modern biomass combustion plants, uh, they achieve a very high efficiency. And high efficiency means a reduction of emissions because the higher the efficiency is, the lower is the amount of fuel that you need uh, to produce uh, a certain amount of heat. So this is one relevant issue. And the other one is uh, that uh, such modern combustion systems, they have a very uh, sophisticated, uh, intelligent process control system. And this process control system uh, ensures uh, that all the emissions that uh, can occur during a combustion, uh, they are kept as low as possible. The use of these highly efficient biomass boilers is increasing 10% per year in Austria. In the city of Lienz, a town similar to Santa Fe in many respects, a compact and stylishly designed building houses a biomass-fired plant capable of providing heat to more than 900 customers via a 35-kilometer network of pipes. It also supplies about 3,000 homes with electricity. This system, designed by BIOS, has succeeded in reducing CO2 emissions by approximately 25,000 metric tons per year. The biomass is supplied by nearby sawmills, which recycle the bark, sawdust, and other wood waste from their milling operations to sell to Lienz as fuel. Additional fuel comes from wood residues from forest thinnings in the area. The heating plant, in use since 2001, has been so successful that it was expanded in 2005 to power the entire city. Emissions from the smokestacks are well below the strict Austrian limits, and even the ash can be recycled, as its high mineral content makes it desirable as fertilizer.
The first stage of the Santa Fe project involved a study of the feasibility of building a similar system to supply heat to homes and businesses in downtown Santa Fe. Would there be enough fuel available over the long term? Would such a system be cost effective? Could it benefit the local economy in other ways? After a year of intensive study, the engineers of Local Energy and BIOS concluded that the answer to these questions was a resounding yes. The question we get asked more than any other is, will there be enough biomass available on a sustainable basis to keep the system running years into the future? Well, we did several studies to try to answer that question. The first being how much biomass would be required. We found that about 20,000 tons of biomass would be required on an annual basis for the system. And then we looked in several sources surrounding Santa Fe, primarily municipal waste sources, commercial waste sources, and forest thinning sources. The first, municipal waste sources, we looked at several landfills, the largest being Caja del Rio landfill in Santa Fe County. In that landfill, on a year of uh, a drought or bark beetle infestation, something on the order of 13 to 15,000 tons come in and are paid to be dumped in the landfill by homeowners seeking to clear their dead pinion trees. But on an average year, when there's no drought, something on the order of 3,500 tons a year go into the Caja del Rio landfill. So right there, you have a significant portion of the fuel for the downtown system. The second thing we looked at was the forest thinning projects. And we found that just in the existing thinning projects that are going on around Santa Fe, there's something between 1,300 and 4,300 tons available on a sustainable basis per year of slash that could be used in the downtown district heating system. Now, once again, those efforts to thin the wildland-urban interface are expected to increase considerably in the years to come, and that number could actually shoot well up over the 20,000 tons per year that we need for the system within the next five or six years. The third source was the most surprising to us, and that was the commercial waste sources. We looked at just 10 sawmills surrounding Santa Fe, 10 of the larger ones. Nine of them are actually within a 20-mile radius of Santa Fe. And we found that the sawmill operators were having to dispose of more than 24,000 tons of waste biomass a year, biomass that could be diverted and used to, for the downtown district heating system. So clearly on a sustainable basis from sawmills, there's more than enough biomass available. So from these three sources together, the answer basically is, yes, there's clearly enough biomass on a sustainable basis to heat the downtown district heating system. People continue to ask us, what if in 10 years this biomass source isn't available and we're going down a road that's not sustainable? To which I typically answer now, well, we're already down a road that's unsustainable with natural gas, and I can't be certain that there'll be enough gas available in 10 years at an affordable price to heat downtown Santa Fe. A significant part of our study was a comparison of the cost of heat from biomass to the cost of heat from natural gas. When we first did the calculation in the winter of 2004-2005, the cost of heat from natural gas was $10.74 a million BTU. And we calculated the cost of biomass heat at more than $16.5 per million BTU. But in the winter of 2005, the cost of natural gas heat shot up to over $16 a million BTU. So it's rapidly approaching the cost of biomass, and we know that cost of natural gas heat is going to continue to rise. A recent study of energy costs for 2005 showed that families earning between $10,000 and $30,000 are paying 17% to 48% of their pre-tax income on energy. This is unsustainable and families are having to make hard choices between paying for heat, buying food, medicine, maybe shoes or things that they might need for their children. 35 percent of all the families in Santa Fe County fall into this income level. So this is very serious for our community. The benefits of this biomass system are twofold. First, immediately the price of energy will be stabilized so the families can predict what the costs will be for them in their household budgets. Uh, the way things are right now, prices are unpredictable and escalating by the month. Uh, the second thing that is very important is that we'll be able to retain a good portion of the money spent on energy in our local economy. In 2005, Santa Fe County residents paid $31 million for natural gas. Of that amount of money, only $4.5 million was retained in the local economy. $26.5 million leaked out of the county, out of the state. So we're not really retaining our local benefit here. If we put this system in, immediately we will double the amount that is retained in the local economy. So right there is a benefit. 
Additionally, if we are able to finance this locally, the amount that we retain in our community quadruples. So that's really a dramatic impact for our citizens. It will help create jobs here. The jobs created by the system itself span a range of skill levels and education requirements. In New Mexico, the harvesting of wood products is a traditional way of life that dates back centuries. Even today, log milling and wood cutting remain important occupations throughout the small villages of the northern part of the state. By creating a demand for forest waste products, the biomass project provides a new revenue stream while helping to preserve activities with historical and cultural significance. We run a small Viga and Pole Latia operation. We also cut timbers. We harvest wood from the national forest and also from private. We debark a lot of our product, which creates a lot of byproduct, which is a significant amount. I don't know what the tonnage would be. Every day, maybe uh, 16, 20 cubic yards, and a lot of byproduct is being produced by small operators like me. It's a, it's a fire hazard by uh, lease agreement from the Santa Clara tribe. I've got to get it out of here uh, as soon as I can and not let it pile up. Most of it goes into, uh, into fields and then it decomposes into uh, compost or some of it is utilized by uh, locals for kindling. <laughs> if I could use my own product and, then, and put it into final, another final form like biomass, it'd be a significant shot in the arm for my operation. Other new jobs would include the transportation of the biomass to its point of use, the management, supervision, and operation of the storage units and boilers, and maintenance of the system, as well as the design and construction of buildings to house the operations. As the use of these systems becomes more widespread, additional jobs will be created in the manufacturing of the components and assembly of the boiler units. The next stage of the biomass effort involved setting up a pilot project to demonstrate the workability of such a system. The project was to be a microgrid, a smaller scale version of the larger system that could power a specific complex or community. After examining a number of potential sites, Local Energy partnered with the Santa Fe Community College in 2004 to develop a biomass microgrid system to supply the 300 square acre campus with heat. Local Energy and BIOS conducted the initial feasibility study and produced a detailed engineering design for the $1.4 million project, which entails the construction of a new building to house a biomass boiler to be integrated with the existing heating system. The optimized design of the biomass system will help the college reduce its use of natural gas by up to 95 percent, leading to significant cost savings and the reduction of CO2 emissions. But we're very anxious to have this be a demonstration site where people can come in and, and kind of get familiar with what it takes uh, to build a site and some of the technology involved, kind of get more comfortable with it. Um, we know that the site that we're developing may be larger than some institutions and individuals would be interested in, but we're going to scale it so that part of the site will have a smaller unit as well as a very large production unit. Our production unit will make it possible for people to see how a campus of 590,000 square feet would be heated. Our smaller uh, unit would make it possible for somebody to see how a single home uh, resident uh, could be powered by this heat source. It is also a little bit probably misunderstood that we will keep our current natural gas based system and that it may well be used for peak needs throughout those winters that are particularly cold and also as a backup system if for some reason there's any delivery problems with wood, which although though we don't anticipate it, we're, we're planning for it. As the Austrian model shows, these efficient biomass microgrid systems can be tailored not only to campuses, factories, and municipalities, but also to neighborhoods and even individual buildings. Local Energy's plan to convert the city of Santa Fe to clean, renewable, affordable energy continues to gain momentum. A unanimous joint resolution was passed by the City Council and the County Commissioners in support of the project.
Additional letters of support have come from Senators Pete Domenici and Jeff Bingaman, as well as Congressman Tom Udall. As community support grows, the organization continues to quantify the economic benefits and establish models that can easily be adapted to other cities and regions. But the concept of using uh, a biomass resource uh, for an energy supply could easily be adapted to other communities that had other forms of biomass available. Uh, in the Midwest where there's a lot of uh, soybean and, and other uh, corn crops growing that can be made into ethanol, uh, soybeans, of course, make a terrific biodiesel and biofuel. There's grass production and so on. Straw can easily be co-fired with other types of biomass. So really the idea of a biomass-fired energy system can be adapted to a number of communities just based on whatever the local biomass resource uh, in that community would be. While a number of biomass initiatives are underway across the country, the Santa Fe Biomass Fire District Energy Project will be the first to provide heat to an entire downtown area. I don't think there's any better community anywhere to do this than right here in Santa Fe. And, and really that's the result of a number of things. We've been uh, a renewable energy community for a long time, at least uh, in the research that's been done here with solar and wind energy through the labs and through private businesses. Um, we have a tremendous intellectual resource here wanting to do these kinds of things. We have a tremendous progressive social community wanting to do something new. And the, the prospect of having the first 100% renewably heated city in America, I think is uh, an opportunity that Santa Fe is not, not going to pass up. Santa Fe's leadership in creating an energy self-reliant community can show the way for the rest of the country, a way that means a better economy, cleaner air, and local control over our basic commodities. It's become increasingly clear, given spiraling prices and pending fuel shortages, that the time to act is now.